Hello everyone, welcome to Wildwood Studio. I'm Sarah and in this video, I'm going to be burning a picture of some hummingbirds. I did this burning as a gift for my grandmother's 80th birthday. The reference photos I used for the hummingbirds came from a couple of photographers that I found on Instagram. I had originally intended to make a smaller burning that was just one bird and one flower, but since I was a bit short on time before my grandma's birthday party, I contacted two people regarding their photographs, thinking that probably only one would get back to me, but they both did. I thought it was really nice of them to agree to let me use their pictures, so I decided to just double the size of the burning and use both. I'm really happy that I did this because it gave me a lot more opportunities to work with the composition and come up with something that I thought was a bit more interesting. It probably took about twice as long as I was expecting, but I love my grandma and you only turn 80 once, so the extra work was worth it. I've put a link to the photographer's Instagram in the video description if you'd like to check out their work. For this burning, I'm using my Razortip SSD10 wood burner. I started with the hummingbirds and used my ball tip pen to outline and shade the feathers on the head and the throat and the small details like the eye and the beak. And then I went back in with my spoon shader to fill in larger areas and add shading overall. I've gotten some comments asking me to post videos in real time, so I've added some more slow clips in this video, but those are still sped up a bit. <laughs> and I can't do the whole video that way since this burning took me 13 and a half hours to complete and that would be too long for YouTube. <laughs> I do hope it's helpful though to be able to see what my hand is doing in closer to real time, even if it's just a few clips. The details on these birds were mostly too small for the sharper pens I have, which are more difficult to use to create sharp curves and little circles, so that's why I was using the ball tip pen. The one thing I do find with this pen though is that it's easy to get little spots where the pen sinks into the wood by mistake if I burn on a temperature that's too high. So for this one, I was burning on a medium temperature and using a very light pressure. I also adjust my temperature constantly when I'm burning. I frequently get comments asking what temperature to use for certain things, but for the most part I just do it by feel, so I start lower than I think I need and then go up, and if I notice that the pen is too hot, I just adjust it. I went over these a few times because I wanted the shading to be fairly dark. I did this because I wanted the hummingbirds to stand out, and I knew that when I added the color, some of the contrast would be covered up by the paints. The way I like to add color, the burning will mostly show through, but the watercolors are slightly opaque and do cover some of it. When I was putting this burning together, I wanted the hummingbirds to have a background, so I added these hibiscus flowers. I looked up what sorts of flowers attract hummingbirds, and then I picked these because I thought they were pretty. I burned and shaded these almost entirely with my spoon shader pen, with the exception being the ends of the stamens. I use my ball tip pen for these since they have lots of little circles and details. I always prefer burning little detailed areas over larger, smoother areas because it's a lot easier to hide mistakes in tiny details, so these flowers were definitely the more difficult part of this burning for me. I went over them all once, and then I had to go back in and darken them all because I had been too nervous and gone too light the first time. Another reason I always try and make my shadows darker if I can is that wood burning can fade a bit over time and I want my burnings to last as long as possible. The clear coat I use helps with this and so does keeping them out of the sun, but I also think that the darker sections will help them to last longer. 
These flowers were from three separate reference photos and I just overlapped them in a way I thought worked well for the composition, but I don't think it's too obvious that they're from different gardens. And overall, this was my favorite composition from the many, many layouts that I tried. So this is the burning without color. I was really happy with how it looked and it made me second guess the idea to add color as always because I was really afraid to ruin it. But color had been the plan from the beginning so I just decided to go for it anyway and you'll have to let me know if it was the right decision in the end. For this I used my Derwent watercolor pencils. I've had this set for a long time and if you've seen my other wood burning with color videos you've probably seen them before. I love using watercolor pencils for this since they're so great for layering color. I started by coloring with the pencils and then spread and blended the watercolors with a brush and some plain water. For the birds, I left lots of their chest without any color. I like to leave exposed wood in the light areas as much as possible and use the whites only for highlights. I accidentally went a bit thicker than I would have liked with the flower in the bottom right corner and I sort of regretted that later, you might notice me sanding some of it off, but I don't think it was too distracting in the end. For the other two, I tried to leave more space blank or very lightly painted since I like the color to complement the burn shading rather than cover it up. That's one of the reasons I like to use watercolors and not acrylics or something more opaque. Thank you. 
Here's a picture of the final burning with the color. As always, please let me know what you think in the comments, and if you'd like to see more of my work, you can check out my Facebook page or follow me on Instagram. Also, please make sure to like this video if you haven't already, and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss all my future art videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.